BPC Gulf provides a lot of information to us. But as you would know, a PPC curve also addresses the economic problem. And the economic problem relates to scarcity. Now you will immediately ask me, but how does the PPC curve address scarcity? And scarcity is where we have a point which is to the right of the PPC curve. In other words, what I have in mind is for argument's sake, six blankets and let's say 70 pillows. So let's draw a line across and here from six upwards and where the two meet we call that point point L. Point L represents scarcity. Why does point L represent scarcity? Because, as you would remember in my table, I've indicated to you that we only employ six workers. So therefore, a point to the right of the PPC curve represents scarcity or unattainability because my workers can only manufacture the combination of blankets and pillows, which is represented by points A to F. In order to reach 60 or 70 pillows and six blankets, I need to employ more workers. And therefore, point L is scarcity and also an unattainable point. So point L to the right, scarcity and unattainability. However, a point inside the PPC curve. Let's take for argument's sake, here we, we have 20 blankets, uh, 20 pillows and one blanket. Let's call it point K. Point K represents a number of things. Any point inside the PPC curve represents inefficiency. Inefficiency because these six workers that I employ, they can manufacture 20 pillows, but if we run a line across until it meets the PPC curve, we see that those six workers can manufacture, if they are productive, 20 pillows and four blankets. But how many blankets do they produce at point K? Only one. So therefore, point K is inefficiency because instead of producing four blankets, they only produce one blanket. Point K is also an attainable point because these six workers are able to produce 20 pillows and four blankets. But with them being able to produce 20 and one, that is an attainable point. However, looking at the PPC curve from a macroeconomic perspective, we say to one another, if a country has full employment, and by that I mean 94 to 96% of the workers are employed, then they will be able to produce the quantity of blankets and the quantity of pillows as indicated by the combinations A to F. With point K to the left of the PPC curve, point K also represents unemployment. Because your output of 20 and 1 is below your potential output of 20 pillows and 4 blankets. And that potential output is not reached because they are part of the labor force that is not involved in economic activity. And as a result, we say point K represents unemployment. But then looking at points A, B, C, D, E and F, they indicate to us a number of things. Any point on the PPC curve indicates efficiency. In other words, the workers are productive. They just break for their normal tea time and lunch time hours. Points A to F indicate to us choices because the company with six workers can produce at point C which is 42 pillows 
and two blankets, or at point E, which is four blankets and 20 pillows. Those combinations are available to him and it is in the ability of the workers to produce those combinations. But then, points A to F on the PPC curve also indicates to us opportunity cost. Why does it show opportunity cost? Because if I move from point D to point E, what is happening? At point D, I'm producing 35 pillows and three blankets. At point E, I am producing four blankets and 20 pillows. So what do we find? Moving from D to E increases my blanket production by one unit. But remember, opportunity cost refers to a sacrifice. What is the sacrifice? The reduction in pillows. And by what quantity did the pillows decrease? 35 minus 20. So that represents an opportunity cost of 15 pillows. So as you can see, a PPC curve provides a lot of information that we can use. And we can use it to indicate whether it is attainable points or unattainable points, whether the workforce is productive, and it also shows to us opportunity cost and scarcity.